Well, the ground situation in Ukraine continues to remain tense, to say the least, with Russian invasion of Ukraine entering its second week. In the latest, Russian forces have captured the port city of Kherson in the south, while the second most important city of Ukraine, which is Kharkiv, continues to report heavy shelling with rocket fire and air attacks. This comes even as Russia and Ukraine are likely to hold uh, the second round of talks today. Meanwhile, as Russian offensive continues, President Volodymyr Zelensky is leaving no stone unturned in keeping the spirits of the Ukrainian citizens high. In his latest video, Zelensky urged the citizens to keep up the fight against the Russian invaders. He said, and I quote, Every occupier should know that they will receive a fierce rebuff from the Ukrainians. Ukraine is a nation that broke the enemy's plans in a week. <laughs> У них не буде тут спокою, у них не буде тут їжі, у них не буде тут жодної тихої хвилини. Окупанти отримують від українців тільки одне – відсіч, люту відсіч. Таку відсіч, що вони назавжди запам'ятають, що ми свого не віддаємо. Що вони запам'ятають, що таке вітчизняна війна. Так, для нас, українців, це Вітчизняна війна. Ми пам'ятаємо, як починаються вітчизняні війни. І знаємо, чим вони закінчуються. Для загарбників. I've got my senior colleague right now, the Jonathan, with me. He's a war correspondent. I'll talk to him. Jonathan, you, do you see that there's going to be any headway? Because uh, both the countries are going to have a second round of peace talks. You think that's going to make difference this time? Yeah, one, one shouldn't be needlessly pessimistic. Uh, my philosophy is um, prepare for, hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. I think we, we have to bear in mind here the track record of peace talks in recent global conflicts. I, I distinctly recall before the Iraq war in 2003, there was a huge and very well publicized round of peace talks beforehand containing all the major world leaders. But there was a very telling quote from a senior American general, I think he said something along the lines of, look, when you have the biggest army in the world poised for battle, uh, there's no incentive to sue for peace. And I can't help thinking of that now when Russia, the second most deadly and devastating army in the world, is already on the ground, is already fully engaged in combat. There really is very little incentive indeed for Russia to sue for peace. The incentive on the other side is much greater. But the concessions that Russia are demanding, uh, a commitment to never join NATO, the secession, obviously, of these independent republics, probably more still recognition of uh, the Russification of Crimea, these are almost unresolvable and unacceptable demands. With one third of the world's wheat coming from Russia and Ukraine, the invasion could mean worsening food shortages in countries like Africa and the Middle East. Let's take a look at this report. الحرب الأوكرانية حتى الروسية هي عاد تأثر على العالم كله وليس علينا إحنا فقط الحرب هذا هي عاد تأثر في الاستيراد والتصدير والتجارة لأن إحنا كدولة مستوردة إحنا دولة مستوردة القم حتى المواد الغذائية معظمها من الخارج فلهذا طبعا بلا شك إحنا عاد تأثر Well, residents in war-hit Ukraine are now rushing to board trains at the city's central station as a large Russian military convoy fast approaches capital Kyiv. Many fear that the time window to leave is now closing very fast. 
Here's a heart-wrenching ground report of what people are going through. We are living today because we are very scared to, to be killed by uh, Russian soldiers. Uh, we are very scared to, to receive a rocket to our uh, underground, our house, and uh, we try to live just to stay alive. It's the last safe day in Kiev. Not sure, but it's in my sensation. And we prefer to keep our children and to move uh, them in the safe place. More safe place than Kiev. Наши родители оказались в других городах, и когда началась война, у нас не было возможности с ними объединиться, мы не смогли доехать до нашего города. И сейчас уже, когда мы осознаем, что ситуация критическая, мы решили все-таки уже ехать. Уже пытаемся как-то попасть в поезда, но мест, к сожалению, мало, много людей, пропускать в первую очередь пенсионеров и детей. Mirinaus Pradeep Datta is right now on ground. He's joining me from Lviv. Uh, Pradeep, hope you're taking good care of yourself. You're getting us all the latest updates and I want to just toss across to you to ask what's happening right now. We're getting reports of how the Russian forces are closing in on capital Kiev and heavy shelling in Kharkiv. You are in Lviv. Tell us what have you gathered uh, so far on the ground situation, Pradeep. See, the uh, situation continues to remain tense, whether it's Lviv, whether it's Kyiv or any other city in Russia, in Ukraine, because Russians are using whatever ammunition they have in their arsenal to have control of the capital city of Kyiv, and they had tried this from day one, but so far they haven't uh, been able to break that uh, wall of uh, resistance that had been shown by the Ukrainian troops as well as civilians there on the ground, and uh, that's one of the reasons that this has taken so much time, because initially when they started rolling their tanks on streets of Ukraine, everybody thought that maybe it would be a match of about 24 hours to 48 hours when they will be having control over the key. But nothing of that sort happened. So that's one of the reasons that it has increased the desperation of Russian troops, though they are maintaining that they are showing a kind of a restraint because they are trying to avoid any kind of the civilian casualty. But if you look at the pictures on the ground, that narrates a different kind of a story that clearly shows that Russians are uh, targeting civilian installations, they are targeting apartments, uh, they are using ballistic missile. For whole night, uh, the sky was lit with the Missiles being fired from by the Russian troops on all sides. Short while back, there was an attack on the railway station in which two kids lost their life. Uh, so, uh, so the, the, there is no reality in Russian claim that they are showing this train and they are not targeting civilian installation. They are only targeting military um, installations. So, if you look at the situation, the ripple effect of the same is visible here also. Here also, the police have uh, started checking, and we have been asked to keep our cards out. And as I am moving from one place to another right now, let me show you the situation on the ground. You will find even people, tents, and uh, very few people moving on the streets here in Lviv also, because normally this is the market which is supposed to act to it's closer to the railway station. But you'll find very few people, because people have been asked to stay indoors. And since yesterday, often we have heard that uh, deafening, uh, deafening sound of the alarm uh, which is being raised, uh, that siren which starts blowing, and then after that, the announcement asking people to rush for safer places. That's I think can happen anytime, anytime the Russian fight the jets, they can target any of the cities because they have already seen the worst happening in Kharkiv, the second largest city, as well as in many other parts of Kiev. So the infighting is going on right now to control Kiev. It is in and around that region. But amid all this bombardment, uh, there are going to be talks between uh, Ukraine and Russia. It's to be seen whether uh, they are going to make any headway, is there going to be any peace. But so far, they have said that there's no going, there's no preconditions so far as these talks are concerned. 
But still, I think uh, uh, nobody is going to leave their position already. They have taken tough on the stand because Russians want uh, the Ukrainian forces to surrender and uh, uh, Ukrainians want the status quo. They want the Russian forces to go back. Uh, it, at this stage, I don't think that any of these things is really going to happen. But yes, we are hoping against hope maybe the better sense prevails and things really uh, come to normal. That's actually India has been insisting upon Prime Minister Narendra Modi in his telephonic conversation has also uh, spoken to the Vlad and Putin. One, he had been concerned about the safe passage of the Indian students who mm -hmm. are stuck up. And second, he also wanted that amicably things need to be resolved. He wanted, at the end of the day, what he really feels is that uh, both the countries should sit on the negotiation table. Uh, but uh, it seems that uh, Russians, uh, the way they have intensified uh, their war here in Ukraine, uh, they have snuffed out all chances of diplomacy. I don't think that anything is really going to work. And already, mm -hmm. the Western world has also imposed so many sanctions. Yesterday, at the United Nations General Assembly resolution, yes. India but Pradeep, you know, none of those sanctions clearly before. are acting uh, as a deterrent. If you're telling us that they're only moving forward with single-minded determination, that just shows that sanctions for one are not working. Whether the talks will have will make some sort of a breakthrough remains to be seen. Thank you very much for joining us with all the latest updates. As India scales up uh, its efforts to evacuate citizens from Ukraine, the government aims to bring back 3,726 Indian nationals from Ukraine. So far, nearly 2,000 have returned in nine flights. Four Indian Air Force flights and five special flights with evacuated citizens landed in India today. Poland border. तो वहां पर तो बहुत ही ज्यादा बुरा हाल है क्योंकि वहां पे एक तो रात को ठंड बहुत और वो एक दिन के अंदर 5 से 6 बच्चों को ही जाने दे रहे थे और वहां पे भीड़ हो गई थी 800 900 बच्चों की इकट्ठी तो फिर वहां पे भगदड़ भी हुई बच्चों के साथ बहुत बुरा सलूक भी हुआ तो बच्चे वहां से भागे वापस अपने सिटीज के तरफ फिर मैं अपनी सिटी वापस आई फिर मेरा सलूक किसने किया जो वहां पे यूक्रेनियन सोल्जर्स खड़े थे मिलिट्री के लोग खड़े थे उन्होंने फिर वहां से मैं अपनी सिटी आई हूं फिर सिटी से फिर मैं हंगरी की तरफ गई हूं और वहां से बहुत इजी था इवैक्यूएशन मैं तो वहां से निकल आया दो तीन दिन पहले अभी बोल रहे हैं कि वहां थोड़ा कंडीशन नॉर्मल हो गया है बट मेरे टाइम पे ना हम हमारे पास कोई हेल्प थी ना खाने के लिए हमारे पास कुछ था ना हमारे पास पीने के लिए वहां पे कुछ था मतलब इवन लाइक हमारे पास कुछ भी नहीं था वहां पे हमारे पास कोई पावर का सोर्स नहीं था हम अपनी फैमिली से कांटेक्ट कर सकें And with that, it's time for us to...